When markets fall, such as they have in August, we need rallies to do certain things. The question is, did the NASDAQ make the right moves on Monday and Tuesday? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Daily Show, where we discuss markets around the world. In less than 24 hours, we'll have the biggest earnings report coming out. The thing that started the 2023 rally was AI, and arguably it was Nvidia. We know that there is an expected plus or minus 11% move based on options price. So what's going to happen to the charts as we approach critical levels? Well, everyone will be focused on US yields, S&P 500 key levels, and of course, Nvidia in itself. Did we see more dark pool activity such as what we had in the last 24 hours? Well, it turns out there were some sneaky reports of some big trades going through. Let's take a look at that, along with some of the unusual activity happening in the current rally into the drop. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show where we discuss markets around the world, including the macro lead indicators and hottest charts. If you like anything to do with markets, remember to subscribe and smash that like button if you enjoyed today's video. So what did we see over the last 24 hours? Well, semiconductors failed to hold their gains. We know that there was a large dark pool transaction on Nvidia. Is that kind of saying something a little bit worrying is happening here? Maybe it's a buy the rumor, sell the fact event. We also know that banks fell over the last 24 hours, but I wanna begin today's video before we get into that discussion by talking about advance and decline ratios with the NASDAQ. Generally, when you have a nice rally in markets, you want the components of the NASDAQ to all come with it. The problem with Monday and even the rallies last week were basically we didn't see that. We saw Nvidia, we saw Tesla put in some massive days, but we didn't see all of the stocks going up. And actually what happened was the NASDAQ went up 1.3% daily gain while the ADLQ was actually negative. So we saw more declining stocks than increasing stocks over that point. And this brings us to some interesting statistics. We've seen this happen a few times over the last decade. And specifically, what happens one day, five days, 10 days, and even 30 days later might surprise you. It actually turns out that markets are generally negative and there has been some larger sells that occur. Now this will happen most of the time. And you can see here that sometimes it is green. So we need to take into account some other factors that we'll look at in today's video around August and September. Let's also take a look at ERP. Yes, our old friend is back, something we've discussed before, which is equity risk premium. Now, Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson has talked about this many times. This is the difference between S&P 500 earnings yield versus the US 10 year yield. And we're seeing this go to lowest point since 2004. Now, can it go lower? The answer is quite simply yes. During the dot com boom, we saw ERP go to an incredibly low level. But for investors, it was certainly a time to be incredibly cautious, especially on leverage, because we all know how that ended up going. So with ERP so low, should we be concerned? Well, the answer is possibly. And we need to be really looking at things with kind of like a little bit more skepticism. When we invest in markets, which is of course different from trading, we need to think about whether the ratios make sense. At the moment, forward PE ratios remain quite elevated, especially in the large caps at 18.4. We know the average is around 16.8, so therefore anything above 16.8 is technically expensive. Should we buy in an expensive market? That's up to you, but at this stage, it could be that price action is the most important thing to do with markets right now, and more importantly, it may be best to be patient and wait for the key levels. If we hit something like a 4200, 4150 on the SPY moving forward, which is the key level we'll look at later on today, possibly we'll see four PE ratios come back down to a much fairer level. Now, why could that happen? Well, let's look at the bull case scenario first here for markets. The first thing is the McClellan oscillator hit negative 100. Now, whenever this has happened in the past couple of years, we've tended to see around an 80% bullish occurrence over the next 30 days. So that's not to say that markets can't go lower first. They tend to go lower actually when you look at the reports. However, the bounce can be significant. So if the S&P 500 comes through and it makes a new low, where do we think it's going to next? Well, we'll wait and have a look at that when we check out indices later in today's video. But of course, for the bulls, they're happy with seeing a negative 100 reading here. Another thing bulls will want to do is have a look at bullish percent index. They'll want to see this turn towards the upside. It's down again at the moment, sitting around this 55, 54 kind of area. 
and we're looking for this to possibly go down as low as even 40 or lower. And if this happens, then it could be a good opportunity, of course, for buyers in markets as well. Uh, pullbacks, absolutely common. Yes, even in bull markets, if you believe we're still in a bull market and everything's looking good, they are completely common. In fact, 3% dips, 5% mild corrections are pretty regular. What becomes a little bit more unusual is when we see those 10, 15, and even 20% corrections. And at the moment, we're sitting on about 6 to 7% for the S&P and the NASDAQ a little bit more in terms of top to bottom selling. This is basically mean reversion at this stage, and it's the expected moves. And why do we say it's the expected move? Well, as most viewers on the channel would know, I'm bringing up some charts here for new viewers as well. We expect volatility at this time of year in pre-election years, and in fact, in all years. Generally speaking, volatility actually runs into October during most years, and these are the periods where we see weakness. And the weakness tends to look something like this during pre-election years, which is a sell-off, and then a possible double bottoming in September, followed by a pretty significant rally that tends to come through in October, November, and December. These are some stats to do with why that could be the way we're still going, even though things look terrible on the macro standpoint. And the reason why is quite simple, that we tend to see a pretty positive back-end year when we have plus 10% made over the first six months. And of course, that's exactly what markets have done here. And therefore, we had a 12 and 0 report in terms of positive favor bias by December. It's just a stat, doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's something that I like to bring up here because it's important to note with the overall weakness that we're seeing at this point. Let's jump into some unusual dark pool volume activity though. First up, I wanna talk about three times bear treasury positions. Someone just placed one of the largest trades ever on this. And because it's happening at these highs, you have to think it's probably a take profit. It makes sense. We hit a big support level on treasuries over the last two days, and they've seen a little bounce. So it's possible that people are saying, well, that was a great run on treasuries. My short was really good. I'm going to take some profit. Large trade equals probably a big player saying, you know what, I think we're getting close to the bottom in treasuries something to keep in mind. Another thing that's happened over the last 24 hours is some large trades through quite a few major areas. The first one here being the triple Qs. We saw that the triple Qs had a defended zone. This was an area where there was large activity and then all of a sudden the market fell straight through it. That probably tells us that these were sells. As the markets rallied back up to around this level, we've got another large dark pool activity probably tells us it could be a sell. At least that's the theory at this stage. And I'll go through why that could be as we cover off a few other things. Semiconductors also put in a very large positional trade. Now, if Nvidia reports well, of course, this is all out the window. And what's going to happen is the markets could continue to rally, being very you know bullish based on Nvidia itself. But if Nvidia, which is really holding the market balance here, it's like the new Apple of the new decade, is basically showing us that this was a point where we saw previous sales on semiconductors. Remember, we bought that up about a month ago and it helped us navigate this August a little bit easier. The problem is if this is a sell, how much lower could we go on semiconductors? Will semiconductors turn back down, break through and go to some key levels that we're looking at? While it does look like there have been a few other large trades in the last 24 hours too, we had multiple big trades through S&P 500 growth ETFs right at the area that we talked about in the previous video being a bit of a rally into a potential decline zone just before that 4440 zone. So here's S&P 500 growth ETFs getting some large dark pool trades on them as well. We also saw a very similar thing with large trades going through short VIX futures. Now the VIX has been probably the worst I've ever seen it in 2023 and that's largely in part thanks to zero DTEs. And of course, that's kind of suppressing the VIX. We'll look at the volatility of the volatility later on today's video. But what this is telling us is that there could be a little bit bearish undertone still in these markets into the back end of August and possibly, of course, into September. And the reason is because there are large weird positions happening at points where you would usually expect them to look like sales based on price action itself. We'll continue to update here on the channel. So if you like that type of stuff, then let us know. Let's now go over to the wonderful world of options and have a look if there was any unusual activity. J&J &J continues to be wild in terms of transactions with this spin-off. 
it's uh, pretty insane what happens there with J&J. But you can see here that overall the options activity was very, very low. In fact, it was only 33 in comparison to around a 40 mil average. And calls again reigned supreme even though the market ended up falling off a little bit. So it tells us that the buy the dip reflex or BTFD really, and with most of retail at the moment, is still quite strong. And that means that it might be more flushing. A lot of you in the comments down below said, Tom, there's no way we've hit the bottom yet. We haven't seen capitulation. Well, that's generally true. In fact, we usually like to see capitulation in markets where markets sell off really aggressively, usually a one to three day sell, and they're so brutal that nobody knows what's going on and fear kind of hits a peak. We haven't technically seen that in this sell off yet, and it's possible that if we make a new low, which we'll look at soon, it could happen. Another couple of options that I think are interesting at the moment, Moderna, we're seeing super strong action there. That certainly capitulated on charts and did a V-shape. We looked at it in our private chat, uh, which of course you can always jump into, free seven day trial on the link in the description down below. But that one in particular, we've been watching it just fall and fall and fall for months and months and months. And then all of a sudden, it found some bid during this recent sell off and pick up over the last couple of days. Let's now move over to when we think an, a market has technically found its low. Well, traditionally, you usually see a bit of a freak out, as we said. A good way of reading that is percentage of stocks above the 50 day average. At the moment, 33% of stocks are still above 50 day average. We kind of want that to fall into the 25 to 30 range to really show us that we've had a little bit more of capitulation. If we take a look at the 20, you'll notice that's back in the 20 zone, which is traditional. And you can see here in March, we went down to 10. In September, sell off August, we went down to 10. In, in the June, in the April, generally you'll go down to somewhere between 15, 20. So we're starting to hit that one, but we're not hitting the S&P 500 with the 50 moving average yet, showing us that we haven't had one of those flash kind of sells just at this stage. US 10 year continues to play around with the high. US 20 year, as we load it up here, is really testing out some big high levels again, set alerts at all these points, guys. You're going to want to know if this happens. And US 30 year is also pushing. And in fact, the 30 year actually managed to get to a new high, but then sold off over the last 24 hours. If these start to accelerate away, expect the bears to be all over the market and of course pressure to be put on. Another one to watch is JP10Y. That just made a new high over the last 24 hours and basically it's pushing higher. We know the Bank of Japan has allowed the market to potentially move to 1%. Now this is going to have ramifications for treasuries and yields. So the higher this thing goes, watch those yields on the American markets as well to see what happens next. Speaking of yields, treasuries had a little bit of reprieve, but of course, even though a huge trade has gone through here, it doesn't stop the fact that we could see markets go back to 88 or even 90 on the charts. And if we go into things like a two hour, a few people were talking about whether this market is actually finding a little bit of buying yesterday. It actually opened up or it looked like it was going to open up a little bit more, a small island reversal, and then we kind of saw a little bit more of a rally through the session. It doesn't mean much yet. It's just finding some type of support at the base. We don't have a major turn. We will update you if we see one on the charts. Let's look at the skew index. It continues to get crushed, which we know is good for the theoretical bears. And this is something we've been looking for for ages on this channel. We started to see it through August. It's continued through August so far. And of course, it's helped us to kind of show that there are multiple ways of building confluence for a bear or a bull case scenario. Copper, that's back to the 20 moving average on the daily. This is a point where you'd expect copper to maybe find weakness. Again, I think it's waiting for Jackson Hole Symposium coming up and also Nvidia earnings. Yes, there's a lot based on that. We did have some nice trades on currencies, in particular the pound US dollar, a day trading masterclass style trade there was pretty damn nice. And of course, we've got here the strength of the US dollar. At the moment, we still have no swing trade towards the short. The bulls are still in control. And you can see our level that we posted in on the previous video held. So basically, this shows us that there's no weakness in the dollar just yet, but it could be forming a Wyckoff top. So we've got to remember this could be like a buying climax or here, and this could be a UT or a UTAD. If the winds start to come down and we break, that's going to mark probably a very big distribution on 
dollar and it should start a new trend. So we'll be watching that very closely, but at the moment, dollar is still strong. Daily closed pretty high right at these levels and it's possible for the market to even go higher back up into the 104s. We just don't know yet. Kind of a dangerous trade I feel at this stage unless you're scalping or day trading. What about gold? Well, gold's interesting. It has shown some signs of basing here, even though it's not the right area. I'm not prepared to say that yet. I think that gold could continue lower, unfortunately, especially if yields go up, US 10, US 20, and US 30. If they go up, gold's not gonna like it. And I think that at this stage, it's really tough to kind of go with any direction other than the current trend, which is still down. Now, there has been some nice action on things like GDX, Barrick, a few others, finding some buyers, but we're just waiting patiently here for gold. It's not gonna run off without us, at least in my opinion. US oil, what's it doing? No turn just yet. Sellers might have liked this level. Obviously, market's coming back down to 78.60. This is a key swing zone, so we'll watch and see what happens with oil there. Trend remains bullish on major time frames, but if it does get underneath that area, we're gonna to have to start turning negative. Now let's move over to the major stocks before we do indices, and this is where things get a little exciting. First up, Tesla actually smashed that line perfect. This was a great level. Support becomes resistance. It comes into that dynamic range we talked about all in this area here, this 240, and it just sells brutally off that level. And why I say it sells brutally is because it was pretty hot at one point. In fact, from the previous day, it put on another 4%, but then it took almost all of that off, and we ended up going down 3.26 off this level. Anyone that shorted there, congrats, not a bad level. And I'd like to see, well, this is going to come down to NVIDIA, even though it's Tesla, and we're going to find out what this market wants to do, I believe, over the next 24 hours, in, and then, of course, Jackson Hole Symposium. This is a key point. It does kind of want to turn here. AAPL is similar. We don't want AAPL too much higher if you're a bear in markets. This range in here is where you want sellers to recommence. So certainly a key level, and anything in here is an interesting point for bears. If the market's able to get above our 180.85, we're going to have to start turning bullish, I think, on this rally in terms of AAPL and others. So certainly watching that. Nvidia puts in the dark pool activity in the previous 24 hours, gets a little bit of a rally, then sells off for a negative 2% decline. A lot of stuff going into this one. And of course we know that this is the most important earnings, pretty much of the earnings season. And the main thing is because it holds so much sentiment to do with what's happening with AI, and therefore what's seen is pretty much the strongest part of the US economy right now, which is this growth in AI and infrastructure. Let's also talk about this level, 400 remains very, very key. If we do end up closing below 400 now, we will have put in a pretty good distribution, a double top, and we can expect Nvidia actually to be in a fairly significant sell-off then, that will really bring the bears out. But for now, 400 remains a super buy um, from the demand zone, and of course, up here remains the cautious area. If this thing starts running though, we're gonna to have to pay attention to every single one of the charts. What about China right now? It's hovering, it's holding its own in recent days. Obviously the news out of this market is all bad, but we do still expect at some point stimulus. I don't expect anything till October personally. We know that Z is slowing the economy and trying to speed other sections up. He wants to get off the reliance on the property market, which has really run the last 14 years of growth when you think about it. And that's slowly starting to happen. There are some good, some bad bits of economic data out of China. We'll have to see what they end up doing. And of course, that's an evolving situation where eventually we'll have a catalyst and that's gonna push those markets pretty heavily. Either way, of course. German market, we know that we expect sellers to be commencing in here. Uh, it did make it back up to almost the 20, 15,800. Basically, the support becomes resistance area. And then we saw some selling. So. That's pretty much where we'd expect it to happen and something that we are watching on the charts. Let's also move over to a few other things here. Another one of things that we're watching is of course the Australian market. Oh, look, not much interest here. If anything, I would say, look, I mean, this is a case where you could say buyers, but the last couple of days have just been holding its own. So I probably stay off on the odds for the moment and then figure out once we break a zone either or. And the trend is currently down the overall trend is, of course, always bullish on these markets. Uh, but in this case, yeah, we're just sitting in a really tough zone for it. Probably wait for more information from the Fed, from Jackson Hole. What about the US 2000? Well, the US 2000 made a new high and then it came straight back down. 
that's not exactly what you would say is a bullish looking market. But if we close above here with a daily, oh, that's going to be very different market. So all of a sudden, you know, it's mostly bearish here. I would say at this stage, again, waiting for the news, waiting for Nvidia. Let's move to the NASDAQ. Now this is where things got a little bit tastier. We got a sell at the level we talked about in the last 24 hours. We kind of have a high and we have a low and we have a higher high. So now that we've made a lower low, we expect like a little rally, maybe 15,000. Then do we expect selling? Well, I think a lot of it's going to come down to Nvidia, but I could see this being something on the horizon. Uh, that would be probably the most likely scenario that I have on the NASDAQ at this stage. And if we go to things like the daily, it did reject. And you can see here, it looks like a big shooting star. So of course, if we end up pushing a new bullish close above that, you have to expect pullbacks to be met by bull demand. It changes a lot in the markets. And it'll be similar as the US 2000. S&P 500. Now, this is the better chart because of course, it rejected the key level, which is what well, ended up doing 44.20 in a bit but 44.40 was the key level we were looking at. So you can see here, a little rejection, candle overall, sell. This is what we had drawn up from the previous session. We talked about this zone being a key level of supply. It only just got into it and then it just went boom. And again, there is a small change of trend for small traders down low. It basically says if we do get a rip rally here, so we see markets actually start to come back up, that there should be a seller somewhere around this area, that 44.10, area there's probably some kind of seller if you're a bull you're probably looking at like a 4360 at this stage and hoping that that zone remains defended and really again i think it comes down to nvidia unfortunately this is a volatile period and a very tough period to pick the lows now if the market is able to get a lot below 4330 i think it's pretty clear that the market will most likely want to go to the next level of what I call equilibrium. And the next level of equilibrium, in my opinion anyway, is going to be somewhere around 4150, 4200. We spoke about it in our live streams that we do every Monday here free on YouTube. And of course, we've talked about it before, but this is the type of level where you can see here rejection, big ham, big um, shooting star style rejection or pin bar as people would call it. It's coming off a moving average. This is the type of thing where if we now make a new low, we think that there could be some flash selling that pushes us into 4150, 4200. It's symptomatic of the time of year, uh, August into September, weakness, volatility increase, bad news coming out. It makes some sense. Another one that's not looking so good at this stage is of course crypto and Bitcoin as well. I'm really skeptical about what this is doing. Now, at the moment, there's a buyer here that's obviously purchased up off the lows again going to look for more information. If I'm a bull, I want to see a new low being formed, probably wiping that out and then rallying back up after it's making structure here. If I'm a bear, well, I just need to see a close below and then hopefully move back down to something like a 19K. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a possible target here based on the most traded zone throughout the whole period, based on maybe high yields really smashing around crypto. And I do think that Bitcoin's probably going to need rate cuts from the Fed um, which will hopefully then lead into things like cryptocurrencies having a new bull cycle. And that may work very well with the halving event that we'll cover here on the channel. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, guys, well, that brings us to the news. And of course, the news ahead, well, there are really just a few bits. There's Flash Services PMI coming out 9.45 New York time. Then we get unemployment claims on Thursday. So that was Wednesday before that. And then on Friday, we have the Jackson Hole Symposium. And of course, we've also got ECB present um, speaking as well. So there's a few things coming out. In general, I would say that this news week is about Jackson Hole and NVIDIA earnings. And of course, anything that's coming out of China. We keep watching, we keep looking, and it's been a pretty good trading time, I would say, during the months of August in terms of you know some volatility, some selling, and some decently nice technical levels. Remember to subscribe, smash the like button. We'll catch you for now. Bye.